Well, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Matins in the Morning. It is Friday, June 28th. It is the memor Memorial of St. Irenaeus. My name is Nathan. I'm joined by Wayne. We're coming to you from the St. Thomas More House of Prayer, where it is our mission to pray and promote the Liturgy of the Hours. You can find out all about our retreat center over at our website at liturgyofthehours.org. We are currently in Volume 3 of the Liturgy of the Hours 4 volume set. As I said, today is the Memorial of St. Irenaeus. Uh, so we just have a few pages. Uh, I'm going to take you through the page numbers. You can also find these in the description just below the video. So our opening hymn, our antiphons and psalms, will come from the current day of the Psalter, beginning on page 1230. Our first reading and response <coughs> read is in the proper of seasons, beginning on 405. In the second reading, response read and concluding prayer is proper for St. Irenaeus, bishop and martyr, on page 1498. <clears throat> As always, we'll begin with our prayer that we pray in preparation for the divine office. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open, O Lord, my mouth, to bless your holy name. Cleanse my heart from all vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten my understanding, and kindle my affections, that I may worthily, attentively, and devoutly say this office, and so deserve to be heard before the presence of your divine majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in with union with that divine intention with which you praise God while you are on earth, I offer to you this hour. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. <clears throat> Sing praise to our Creator, O sons of Adam's race, God's children by adoption, baptized into His grace. Praise the Holy Trinity, undivided unity, Holy God, Mighty God, God immortal, be adored. To Jesus Christ give glory, God's co-eternal Son. As members of his body, we live in him as one. Praise the Holy Trinity, undivided unity, Holy God, mighty God, God immortal, be adored. Now praise the Holy Spirit, poured forth upon the earth who sanctifies and guides us, confirmed in our rebirth. Praise the Holy Trinity, undivided unity, Holy God, mighty God, God immortal, be adored. <clears throat> My God, do not reject my cry for help, assailed as I am by the wicked. O God, listen to my prayer, do not hide from my pleading, attend to me and reply, with my cares I cannot rest. I tremble at the shouts of the foe, at the cries of the wicked, for they bring down evil upon me, they assail me with fury. My heart is stricken within me, death's terror is on me. Trembling and fear fall upon me, and horror overwhelms me. Oh, that I had wings like a dove to fly far away and be at rest, so I would escape far away and take refuge in the desert. I would hasten to find a shelter <clears throat> from the raging wind, from the destructive storm, O Lord. 
and from their plotting tongues. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My God, do not reject my cry for help, assailed as I am by the wicked. The Lord himself will free us from hostile and treacherous hands. For I can see nothing but violence and strife in the city. Night and day they patrol high on the city walls. It is full of wickedness and evil. It is full of sin. Its streets are never free from tyranny and deceit. If this had been done by an enemy, I could bear his taunts. If a rival had risen against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, my own companion, my intimate friend. How close was the friendship between us. We walk together in harmony in the house of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord himself will free us from hostile and treacherous hands. Entrust your cares to the Lord, he will sustain you. As for me, I will cry to God, and the Lord will save me. Evening, morning, and at noon, I will cry and lament. He will deliver my soul in peace in the attack against me. For those who fight me are many, but he hears my voice. God will hear and will humble them, the eternal judge, for they will not amend their ways. <clears throat> they have no fear of God. The traitor has turned against his friends. He has broken his word. His speech is softer than butter, but war is in his heart. His words are smoother than oil, but they are naked swords. Entrust your cares to the <clears throat> Lord, and he will support you. He will never allow the just man to stumble. But you, O oh God, will bring them down to the pit of death. Deceitful and bloodthirsty men shall not live half their days. O oh Lord, I will trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Entrust your cares to the Lord. He will sustain you. Children, listen to my words of wisdom. Pay attention to my counsels. <clears throat> From the first book of Samuel, Nabal's wife Abigail was informed by one of the servants who said, David sent messengers from the desert to greet our master, but he flew at them screaming. Yet these men were very good to us. We were done no injury, neither did we miss anything all the while we were living among them during our stay in the open country. For us they were like a rampart night and day, the whole time we were pasturing the sheep near them. Now we see, now see what you can do, for you must realize that otherwise evil is in store for our master and for his whole family. He is so mean that no one can talk to him. Abigail quickly got together two hundred loaves, two skins of wine, five dressed sheep, five seahs of roasted grain, a hundred cakes of pressed raisins, and two hundred cakes of pressed figs, and loaded them on asses. She then said to her servants, Go ahead, I will follow you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. <clears throat> As she came down through a mountain defile riding on an ass, David and his men were also coming down from the opposite direction. When she met them, David had just been saying, Indeed, it was in vain that I have guarded all this man's possessions in the desert, so that he missed nothing. He has repaid good with evil. May God do thus and so to David, if by morning I leave a single male alive among all those who belong to him. As soon as Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the ass and, falling prostrate on the ground before David, did him homage. As she fell at his feet, she said, My Lord, let the blame be mine. 
Please let your handmaid speak to you and listen to the words of your handmaid. Please forgive the transgressions of your handmaid, for the Lord shall certainly establish a lasting dynasty for my Lord, because your Lordship is fighting the battles of the Lord, and there is no evil to be found in you your whole life long. If anyone rises to pursue you and seek your life, may the life of my Lord be bound in the bundle of the living in the care of the Lord our God, but may he hurl out the lives of your enemies as far from the hollow of a sling. And when the Lord carries out all for my Lord in the promise of success as he has been as he has made concerning you, and appoint you as commander over Israel. You shall not have this as a qualm or burden on your conscience, my Lord, for having shed innocent blood, or for having avenged yourself personally. When the Lord confers this benefit on your lordship, remember your handmaid. David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you to meet me today. Blessed be your good judgment, and blessed be you yourself, who this day have prevented me from shedding blood and from avenging myself personally. Otherwise, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who has restrained me from harming you, if you had not come so promptly to meet me, by dawn Nabal would not have had a single man or boy left alive. David then took from her what she had brought him, and said to her, Go up to your home in peace. See, I have granted your request as a personal favor. When Abigail came to Nabal, there was a drinking party in his house, like that of a king, and Nabal was merry because he was very drunk. So she told him nothing at all before daybreak the next morning. But then, when Nabal had become sober, his wife told him what had happened. At this his courage died within him, and he became like a stone. About ten days later the Lord struck him, and he died. On hearing that Nabal was dead, David said, Blessed be the Lord, who has requited the insult I received at the hand of Nabal, and who restrained his servant from doing evil, but has punished Nabal for his own evil deeds. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you to me today. You have held me back today from shedding blood and from taking revenge into my own hands. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. You have held me back today from shedding blood and from taking revenge into my own hands. From the Treatise Against Heresies by St. Irenaeus, Bishop. The glory of God gives life. Those who see God receive life. For this reason God, who cannot be grasped, comprehended or seen, allows himself to be seen, comprehended, and grasped by men, that he may give life to those who see and receive him. It is impossible to live without life, and the actualization of life comes from participation in God, while participation in God is to see God and enjoy his goodness. Men will therefore see God if they are to live, Through the vision of God, they become immortal and attain to God himself. As I have said, this was shown in symbols by the prophets. God will be seen by men who bear his spirit and are always waiting for his coming. As Moses said in the book of Deuteronomy, On that day we shall see, for God will speak to man, and man will live. God is the source of all activity throughout creation. He cannot be seen or described in his own nature and in all his greatness by any of his creatures. Yet he is certainly not unknown. Through his word, the whole creation learns that there is one God, the Father, who holds all things together and gives them their being. As it is written in the Gospel, No man has ever seen God except the only begotten Son, who is, the, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has revealed him. 
From the beginning the Son is the one who teaches us about the Father. He is with the Father from the beginning. He was to reveal to the human race visions of prophecy, the diversity of spiritual gifts, his own ways of ministry, the glorification of the Father, all in due order and harmony at the appointed time and for our instruction. Where there is order, there is also harmony. Where, where there is harmony, there is also correct timing. Where there is correct timing, there is also advantage. The Word became the steward of the Father's grace for the advantage of men, for whose benefit he made such wonderful arrangements. He revealed God to men and presented men to God. He safeguarded the invisibility of the Father to prevent man from treating God with contempt and to set before him a constant goal toward which to make progress. On the other hand, he revealed God to men and made him visible in many ways to prevent man from being totally separated from God and so cease to be. Life in man is the glory of God. The life of man is the vision of God. If the revelation of God through creation gives life to all who live upon the earth, much more does the manifestation of the of the father through the word give life to those who see god <clears throat> true teaching was in his mouth no evil was ever found on his lips he walked with me in goodness and in peace my hand will be a <clears throat> steady help to him my arm will give him strength he walked with me in goodness and in peace <clears throat> let us pray Father, Father, you, you called St. Irenaeus to uphold your truth and bring peace to your church. By his prayers, renew us in faith and love, that we may always be intent on fostering unity and peace. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. We'll now conclude with our prayer that we pray following the divine office. To the most holy and undivided Trinity, to the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, to the fruitful virginity of the most blessed and glorious Mary ever virgin, and to the whole company of the saints, be everlasting praise, honor, and glory by all creatures, and to us remission of all our sins, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father, and blessed be the breast which nourished Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.